This machine feeds the part out, spot drills, rough and finish turns, drills, taps, rotary brooches, turns again, mills a hex, threads the part, feeds the part out, grabs it with the counter spindle, cuts the part off, drills, face grooves, spot drills, and it does all of that in 11 seconds, which is 11 times longer than it takes you to subscribe to our channel. So this part right here is a small spline shaft for the automotive industry. And the thing about the automotive industry is you have to make your parts really, really fast and really, really consistent. You might think $50,000 is a lot for a car, but let me tell you something. If I made you a car by myself from scratch in this building, it would cost like $3 million for a Honda Civic. So in order to make these cars affordable, we have to make these parts really, really fast. And that's where the multi-Swiss comes in. One of the many reasons why I think a multi-Swiss is good for making parts like this really fast is its thermal growth. Each spindle is surrounded by a thin layer of oil. You're only talking like four tenths, whatever that is in metric right here. And that coolant is regulated to a very specific temperature. So what's really crazy to me is right when you turn it on, within like a minute, the coolant is at the temperature it will run at the whole day. So your thermal growth is nowhere near as bad as any other machine. And this leads to a more consistent process right out of the gate, which is super cool, which makes your life easier. You have to cram 15 operations into 11 seconds, and the only way to do that is with a machine like the Multi-Swiss. With its small footprint, all eight spindles in there. Now, you don't want to look at these as eight different parts. You want to look at it as eight progressions of one part. And it all starts with the feed-out right here. Now, station one is always going to be our feed-out. There are several different ways to feed out the part, but the best way, in my opinion, is this hydraulic chuck right here. The first spindle comes forward and then the hydraulic chuck grabs the material, which then allows the main collet to open up, go back, and that's what feeds out the part. Now it's kind of hard to see, but there's also a center drill on station one. So after it pulls the part out, it wraps up an X and then puts a little spot in there for the next station. So after each operation, you're gonna notice the drum rotates. And when the drum rotates, we then go on to station two. But every now and again, it does a really big rotation. Well, that's because all the motors behind this drum have cables going to them. And as it rotates, that winds up. And if it kept just spinning around and around and around, it would rip all those cables off. So on the eighth rotation, it actually spins back to station one. And that is how that works. So station two is actually really simple. All it does is rough and finish turn. It's just one tool. I gotta say though, I really love how I'm using the Kenna Metal KM Micro Series in Station 2. It has been really nice just popping one screw out and being able to change all the different heads from grooving, turning, threading, you name it. So I gotta give Kenna Metal a shout out because that has made working on this multi-Swiss really convenient. So thank you guys, your products rule. Now Station 3, the first thing it's gonna do is drill. Now the drill follows the pilot that was put on in Station 1, and then after that it comes up and it taps. Now you'll notice in the footage, the tap actually moves a little bit. That's because the holder I'm using allows the tap to flow. So when I feed onto this tap, I'm actually going at a slower feed rate than the pitch of my threads to pull the tap out. And then when I reverse the spindle, I start feeding out at a faster feed rate to let the tap push back in. When you cut like this with a tap, it usually creates a better thread in my opinion. So I like to use that instead of rigid tapping. Oh man, we got boxes. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six seven right there that's a future video but right now i just want to interrupt real quick and let you guys know that we have a new long form youtube channel titans of cnc podcast that's where we're putting the entire long length podcast on if you want to learn about this industry learn about machining just get crazy knowledge that's where you go titans of cnc podcast boom hit the subscribe button help us bring amazing awareness to this industry and i love you guys boom so now we're on to station four. To give you a quick recap, we fed the part out, we put a 90 degree spot in there, we rough and finished turned the OD, we drilled and we tapped. And on to station four is gonna be our rotary broach that Slater Tool gave us. And if you haven't seen our video on rotary broaching, make sure you go check that out. We had a lot of fun making that video. Slater really hooked us up with a bunch of tools for it. So yeah, go check it out after you finish this video though. All I had to do was center this tool and then feed it on in Z and wrap it off. And that gave me a perfect spline. On to station five. So station five uses another Kenna Metal KM micro tool holder. I gotta say again, these are really convenient to change out. I love that tooling system. You'll notice I come up and I clean the front of both my chamfers with a rotary brooch fed on. It'll leave a little bit of a line when you do rotary broaching, so it's good to come in and just skim a few thousandths off to make the front of the part look a little bit better. After that, it's gonna sneak in behind the head where the hex is gonna be, and it's gonna groove turn the OD of the threads. And then that's pretty much it for station five. Then it goes on to station six. 
On Station 6, we have our custom end mill that chamfers the front and back face of the hex. I had to do this because I can't go back to earlier tools like I would in a normal machine. I have to keep progressing forward. Now, we made this end mill on our Walter. Oh. Hey, man. Don't spoil my video. That video is going to be sick. If you want to check that out, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. It ain't break time. Where was I? So the last operation before we cut off is our thread. That's station number seven. Again, it's another KM Micro Series. I really love using that tooling series on this machine, so you're going to see it in every video pretty much coming up. So station seven is the last station before we transfer. And now we're going to rotate to station eight, which is going to be our cutoff. And station eight is always going to be your cutoff on this machine. The counter spindle is going to come up and it's going to grab the part once it feeds out. And then the cutoff tool is going to come in and cut off. Now this, in my opinion, has been the station that always holds you back on your cycle time. The more operations on your counter spindle, the more likely it is to hold you up. And the reason for that is because at the bare minimum, I have to come up, grab the part, cut it off, go back, eject the part. All the machining operations you add to this are going to pretty much be your cycle time. And in this case, it was. My counter spindle was the longest operation, which is why the cycle time is 11 seconds. And on the counter spindle, I did a lot. I came in with a small drill, drilled out the hole in the back. I came in with the face groove tool from Horn, which left an immaculate finish, by the way, guys. Good job. Your products rule. And then I came in with a 90 degree spot to chamfer the small hole, and then I ejected the part. And when it ejects, the parts fall into a little conveyor system in the back. And one thing that I think is really cool about the tray system in back is I can go into this little menu right here and choose exactly how many parts I want to go into each tray before it rotates. And you can see right here, I chose 10, but you don't have to do 10. You could do hundred, you could do 500, you can do whatever your heart desires. And the super easy menu makes it all extremely convenient. So thank you, Tornos, your products rule. Well, that's how you cram 15 operations into 11 seconds on the multi-Swiss. I gotta say, this machine is an absolute modern marvel of technology. I love watching this thing run. If you didn't hit subscribe already, I don't get it because you got this far in the video. Why wouldn't you hit that button? But make sure you smash that button. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and don't be stupid, ring that notifications bell. See ya. If you are new to a machine shop and you've never done this, air gun, right? Stick it in your shoe. Just simple little things like this. Oh yeah. Oh, I can smell my foot. <laughs> so that after, so after that, it'll index and it's on a station. Don't laugh. If you laugh, I laugh, dude.